Keith from Head Games here. Today, I got my buddy Jeff Racer over here. We're gonna flow test some stuff. Keep watching. Hey, I'm Jeff from Full Race, and this morning I made my way over to Head Games to visit my good friend Dave, and we're gonna do it a little test. So right here is a Ford Bronco 2.7 liter driver's side turbo inlet and most people don't think anything of this if they're into a bronco nobody replaces it but it's got this real goofy little thin thing inside here i'll get some b-roll of that later and then uh, a really restrictive turbo inlet of about 38 millimeters and so what we're going to do is we're going to test a full race prototype inlet and this one opens it up quite a bit to about 44 millimeters and we step up the coupler we make the hole two bigger the idea of this thing is that we're going to allow the new Garrett Power Max turbos that were just recently released to breathe a little bit better. And these turbos work really well. Awesome bolt-on plug-and-play for these trucks. The motor's fuel systems can take E85, totally stock, just upgraded turbo. So if we can get this driver's side turbo to breathe a little better, we're going to make a bit more power. So we're going to test it on the flow bench before we go any further and uh, see where we stand. So one of the big issues that I had with trying to flow this thing is how am I going to attach it to the flow bench? And Jeff said, hold on, I got you. ChatGPT has actually made something that he could use to flow test it really, really cool just by using some kind of some kind of program, I guess. I, I just know. gave ChatGPT some specific instructions and it executed them. It took a little bit of work and probably a little more than it would have taken to just actually design it, but it was really cool to have AI make a part for Dave's flow bench. And now, as you can see, it is made, it's flat, and it has a little hole inside here, and this is what the manifold is going to attach to this, and then it, we're going to flow it. So, let's go. So what I'm going to do here is just put a little clay around the outside edge just to see if the air doesn't, because if the air doesn't like a nice smooth transition, just think about everything like smooth transitions. If you want to hit something hard, nobody likes that. So we're going to put just a smooth transition around it and see if that changes anything. All right, so what Dave's doing here is he's created this little kind of velocity stack tulip shape on the top of it. And what that's doing is it's converting the flow that enters this tube from turbulent to laminar. And that's important because in the real world, this tube is connected to another tube that's connected to the air filter. And the air isn't coming from around into the tube. It's a nice, smooth, laminar flow into the elbow and so by doing this it's going to allow us to at least simulate that a little bit more and really gauge what this thing is doing so without the tulip we're at 214 cfm with the tulip let's let's see where it stacks up at. All right, we're now gonna flow bench the full race part, prototype part, attach the fixture, and see where it sets at with no tool fit. So I put the orifice on it and we put the orifice on it to compare apples to apples just like we did the last one. And this way, because like Jeff said, this thing's connected to something just like a silver head with an intake manifold, needs some kind of orifice to make it so the air does not just hit a rough edge and it's gonna go nice inside. Let's try this. So 
So that was interesting. No change with the tulip lossy stack thing versus none. And that's really telling us quite a bit, which is this section of the um, inlet tube is not your restriction. So down here where that hole is little, we're pretty much maxed out on how much you're gonna flow through that little hole. So I would call this a uh, successful mission. Free stuff, thank you, Dave. All right, so this is the full race prototype part. And what we've done is we've optimized the factory part in every way to make it a complete bolt-on. So obviously the bolt pattern's the same. The gasket here is the same. We retained a little heat shield for the electronic wastegate. And we gave it ample clearance here for the EGR componentry. So that's not found on the other uh, three liter Bronco in the Raptor, but it is on the 2.7. So we had to make some real accommodations to get the 2.7 intake to flow like the 3.0, actually better than the 3.0. And the reason is Garrett released their PowerMax turbos for it, uh, for the platform, the 2.7 and the 3.0. And we're seeing that on the 2.7, this little hole right here, compared to that one, which is the Garrett size, and this little hole right here, compared to that one, which is pretty much an in-gen or any aftermarket intake size, they're gonna be the restricting uh, difference in the driver's side turbo. So passenger side turbo with an aftermarket intake can be flowing great on these things once you, once you put the Garrett turbos on them. But huge. the driver's side's gonna, gonna choke up. So yeah, it is quite a bit bigger. That is crazy. That is crazy. But obviously, right, it went from 214 to 242 on the, on the bench. Yeah, yeah, and that's not like, uh, this is actually what it would do on the car. You can tell that thing is not gonna flow just 30 CFM better. Like this is, this is big. I mean, at the very least, we got 15% more flow, worst right. case scenario. Right, yeah, it's definitely better. Jeff, in terms of volume, do you know how much volume you added to this? Or, I mean, I don't even think that would matter. You, you also have the same turn, right? These are both the same turn, but this is a little bit more gradual because you made it bigger. So in turbo dynamics, real simply, bigger is better on the inlet. And what you want to think about is any restriction for that turbo to suck in air is gonna hold it back from making power. And so all we did is make it absolutely as big as you possibly can in this very tight space constraint. You have the steering shaft, you have the alternator, the EGR line, coolant lines, oil lines, turbo manifold. There's so much stuff in this really tight area. So really, we just made it the absolute maximum size you can fit. I think one thing that differentiates Full Race from other companies uh, that would make something like this is really being able to flow test stuff and being able to validate their designs versus just putting stuff out there. And I think that's a, lo a lot of companies do. They just try to make it fit. They don't try to make it work. And Full Race has always been a company that doesn't just make stuff. They want to make stuff that makes a difference. And I'm really glad to be a part of that. Thanks, Dave. Appreciate that. We really yeah. value our reputation. I know you do as well. And uh, the parts that we put out there ultimately is who we are. And it's the face of our company to our customers. So we do the best we can. And the fact is 3D printing changed the game. Like to be able to just print this thing, bench With it. ChatGPT. Well, that was for, yeah, I mean, for the one part, but we, we yeah. spent a lot more ChatGPT yeah. yeah. effort on yeah. the other part. Yeah. So yeah, yeah it's it was a good learning experience. A lot of fun. That's going to do it for us today. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment below, and go check out fullrace.com. You can also check out their YouTube and their all their Instagram. And At Full Race Motorsports. We're Full Race Turbo on YouTube. Yeah. That's us. Doodles.